loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Condemnation, damnation, is the result of you rejecting God's Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. The Gospel is the Lord Jesus Christ came and died for your sins, was buried according to the Scriptures, and arose again the third day according to the Scriptures. It's not that you're going to hell, you're already there. You've got to change your destination by believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. For the Bible says, what must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. God loved you, that he sent your cure. For the wages of sin is death. You're going to die one day. It may be today. It may be this afternoon. Death will come knocking on your door. Death is a proving fact that you are a sinner. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There is none righteous, no, not one. The Bible says, Whosoever believeth in him should not perish. Whosoever is anyone and everyone that can hear this loud voice preaching from the gospel, the Holy Bible. It tells you, male, female, even if you don't know what you are. Well, go ye in all the world and preach the gospel. Christ died for Native Americans also. Christ died for whosoever will believe in Him. You can obtain eternal life by the one that said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. The Bible proclaims for us to go eat all the world and tell you about not president candidates, not about religion. He, the Bible tells us to go and tell the people how Jesus died. He died in agony. He died in victory. He died for you. He was buried according to the scriptures. And he rose victorious. He is not here. He is risen, the Bible says. No one of your religion people can say they have risen from the dead. They are still entombed. They are still buried. They are still dead. But I serve, you can serve, a risen God that is seated at the right hand of the Father. Now when Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh unto the Father but by me. He has ruled out your religion. He has ruled out your works. He has ruled out your money. The only entrance to God the Father into glory is by Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. For God so loved the world 
That love in John 3.16 is past tense. There is no love of God when you reject His Son. There is no love of God when you curse His Son. The love of God is when you come to Calvary's cross and you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you become a child of God by Jesus and Jesus alone. For there's only one thing that washes sin. The precious blood of Jesus Christ. The Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. What you can do cannot take away your sin. You have a terminal condition called sin. And if you die in your sin, you will be judged, you will be found guilty, and you will be cast into the lake of fire which burneth forever. And you do not have to. When the offering of God is being spoken right now, when the Word of God is telling you what you need to do to avoid hell. Hell was made for Satan and his angels. And if you want to go up on his path, you want to go his way, it's there. But if you want to do right, you want the will of God. You want the love of God. It's to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world. This is the day of salvation. This is the time of mercy and grace for you to turn to your Creator. For you to seek eternal life that God is offering you right now. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God's eternal life. God is offering you a gift, and gifts are free. This is a gift that's for whosoever. What size you are, what sex you are, what age you are, this gift is for all. It is set up for you to know that there is life, and life is in Jesus Christ, for only Jesus saves. Your religion cannot save you. Ignoring the message cannot save you. I sit here and tell you about the gospel that you are without excuse. You will never be able to tell God, I never knew, I didn't know how, because we are telling you how. This Word of God has been settled for 6,000 years plus. This Word of God has been around since your great-great-grandparents, Adam and Eve. This Word has been settled since ever since... Abel offered his offering and was received by God. And the offering that's received by God today is the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. For with the mouth, confessions made unto salvation. I am not ashamed of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. For with the heart, man believes unto righteousness. You will die. Death is sure. Death is more sure than this afternoon. Death is more sure you putting your head on a pillow tonight and getting a good night's sleep. Death is even more sure than taxes. Death needs to be dealt with and it needs to be dealt with right now. Because you're not sure when death is coming to your door. And you better die in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and have your sins washed. Isaiah chapter 1. Isaiah chapter 1. God says, 
come now. God is offering you an invitation. God is telling you, come out from your commerce. Come out of the world. God is seeking you to come to Him. Isaiah 1, 18. He says, come now, not tomorrow. Not next year. Not when I've sold my wild oaks. He says, come now. There may be no then. Come now. Let us. Thank you. That's God speaking to you, friends. God says, let us, me, holy God, and you, unrighteous sinner, come. Let's get together. We're standing here at a fruit market with all kinds of vegetables, and God says, let us leave your tomatoes and come to God as let us. That's an invitation by God. Come now, let us reason together. God is a reasonable God. He is offering you an invitation. He wants to get with you. And He wants to reason with you. But He's not going to do it with foolishness. He's not going to do it with religion. He's not going to do it with Paul. He's going to do it with His Holy Bible. The Bible proscribes the way that you need to do and not what you tell God what to do. That's why men don't like the Bible because the Bible will tell you you can't tell the Bible. Come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. I am not saying this. I am reading to you the holy word of God. Isaiah 1, verse 18. God speaking said, Come now, let us reason together. I am speaking to you by the word of God that you are to come. We have gone as far as we can to you. Now you've got to come. This can't be done by me. This can't be done by your parents. This can't be done by your grandparents. It must be done by you and you alone. You and God alone. Come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord, though your sins be as scarlet. You have got a problem with God. You are a sinner. And there are no degrees of sin. For all have sinned. No, lying is worse than stealing. There is no murder is worse than a bank robbery. All the sins are the same sins. They are against God. And the Bible says, Behold the Lamb of God which take away the sin singular. Jesus Christ died on that cross and was risen from the grave for all sins. Every one of your sins can be washed in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. No matter how many times, no matter who what you are, no matter what you have done, you can be washed in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. Now is the time. Behold the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. There's nothing else that will wash away your sin. God don't take checks. 
God don't take religion. God don't take works. He takes the precious blood of His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. What do you think Christian is? You are in Christ. Now, this is not the Jesus that you eat. Eating Jesus makes you a cannibal. It doesn't make you saved. You got to receive Jesus by faith, not by oral. Know your sins be as scarlet. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. The purest white that can be on this planet is snow, not touched by man. And the only way for you to be that clean and that pure is by God. And by God, His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, Acts 20.28. 20, Acts 20.28. 20, Acts 20, 28. I'm trying to get there. <laughs> to feed the church of God, which He has purchased with His own blood. If Acts 20, 28 says that blood was God's blood that paid for the church, then the one that died upon that cross that shed His blood is God. You got to make sure you got the right Jesus Christ. Paul teaches the Corinthian church there's another Jesus. You can get Jesus a dime a dozen plus tax. But you better get the Jesus Christ who is God, the Jesus Christ that was born of a virgin, the Jesus Christ that went to Calvary, the Jesus Christ that was buried according to the Scriptures, the Jesus Christ that's not in the tomb that the angels proclaim, He's not here, but He is risen. You better have that Jesus Christ. For all have sinned. And yet God reaches out to you and says, Come! Come out! God is not going to hang out with your wicked, sinful friends and family. He wants you to come out of them. He wants you to step out. He wants you to make that move. The first move has been made by God, Calvary, the empty tomb. The next move is your move. For God so loved the world, past tense. First John one nine. First John 1 John 1.9 If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. God is willing to forgive you on the count of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. God is willing to forgive you upon what Jesus has done. God is willing for you to come to Him by His Son. Isaiah 58, 1 says, Cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and show my people their transgression. I am commanded by God to take the gospel to you. I am commanded by God to have a loud voice for you that you can hear what God has to say. 
Because this is life or death. Now, if I were to raise my voice for a stupid baseball game or a stupid carnival, you would all rejoice and enjoy. But if I raise my voice for the Word of God, you take offense. There's something glorious about this black book I hold in my hand. There's something wonderful about this Bible. And there's something more precious, the precious blood of Jesus Christ without spot. It saved my soul. On Monday, people, look at me. I will be 29 years old. I don't look it, do I? But on Monday, I will celebrate my... Hey, that music's too loud behind me! Officers, that music is too loud! Those music is too loud! They're too loud! I take offense in that music being too loud, but I don't take offense of a loud man preaching the gospel! Now, back to Monday... 29 years ago, I received the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior. And as loud as that gets, I will go louder for Jesus Christ because I am not ashamed of the gospel. I won. I received the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior 29 years ago, 773 Broad Street. Waterford, Connecticut, in my grandmother's living room, as Joe Caswell showed me an open Bible about the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. I bowed my head. I said, Christ, I'm a sinner. I'm going to hell. I need your love. I need your gospel. The next day I began evangelistic. I began to tell people about Jesus Christ. 29 years I've been preaching Jesus Christ. I am not ashamed of the gospel and you're not going to shut me up. As long as God gives me a voice, as long as God gives me the message, as long as God shows me His mercy, I will preach Jesus Christ that you may be saved. It is the power. It is the force. It is the will of God that you may be saved and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Because God is long-suffering. He's not willing that any should perish. God does not want to throw you into hell. And God will not throw you into hell. That sounds like, well, what's he saying? God will not throw you into hell. Your sins will put you in hell. John chapter 3. The Gospel of John chapter 3. John chapter 3. John chapter 3, verse 18. He that believes on him is not condemned. I'm not condemned. I am saved by the blood of the Lamb. The Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. The precious Lamb, the precious blood of Jesus Christ without spot. But he that believeth not, is condemned already because he has not believed the name of the only begotten Son of God. See, God's not going to throw you in hell. Your sins have already got you there. To come to Jesus Christ to get out. April 1987, I came to Jesus Christ and I got out. And I got my name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. 
These things have I written unto you that you may know you have eternal life. These things that I've written that you may know you have eternal life. And eternal life is in Jesus Christ. I've got 29 years experience in Jesus Christ. How many of you got? If you got no experience in Jesus Christ, you ain't got no eternal life. You're condemned. You're damned. And you need to come out. Remember what God said? Come now. Let us reason together. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Only God can clean your filthy life. And you may not think your life is filthy. All have sinned. You're filthy in God if your sins are not washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. Any sin makes you filthy. Any sin makes you a sinner. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. That's the message we give to you. That is the message that God says, go ye in all the world and preach the gospel. I don't see the beer guy here representing his alcohol. Mimi, if you get tired, you can sit down, okay? I don't see the drug people out here offering their drugs that you may have their peace at a price. But I... I lived 18 years as a sinner a hell-bound sinner, a wicked hell-bound sinner, a wicked sinner that I wouldn't even tell you what I'd done. And I was raised Roman Catholic. I was supposed to tell a man in the telephone booth. I grew up as a Roman Catholic, die-hard, Polish Roman Catholic. And if you don't understand what a Polish Roman Catholic is, all the popes are Polish. That shows you how stupid it is. Sorry. My descendants were from Poland. I grew up in that puppetry. Puppetry. Papuri. And I was lost and going to hell. Being a Catholic. 18 years. And I hate the Lord Jesus Christ just as every Catholic was supposed to. 18 years. And I was going to die and go to hell. In those 18 years, I've never received a gospel track as we have here. These tracks will tell you what Jesus expects from you, what God wants you to do. I never received a gospel track in 18 years. I never had a Bible preacher preach to me in 18 years. You ought to thank God for sending someone like us. The gospel of Jesus Christ was not open to me until April 1987. On that afternoon, the Bible was opened up to me. I was shown what God had done and what I couldn't do. I was shown 
the gospel that Jesus died for my sins? I knew that. I knew Jesus died for my sins. Every Catholic knows that. Jesus died for my sins was Good Friday and brought me Easter candy two days later. I knew that. And in my church, Jesus was nailed to the cross. As a Roman Catholic, I saw Jesus. Years as a Roman Catholic. Don't forget it. As a Roman Catholic, Jesus was nailed to that cross every week. But I was open to the Bible and shown that Jesus Christ arose from the grave without bunnies, away from the Roman junk. And that the reason he rose and died was for my sins. I didn't have to go to the man in the booth. I went to God the Father. I said, God, put my sins under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and forgive this wicked sinner. And my name was written down in the Lamb's Book of Life and it's been there for 29 years and will be there forever. Your name can be written down today, April 2016, and you can be born again. You can be saved, for Jesus said, ye must be born again. Today could be your second birth. Today could be the name that your name gets written in the book of life. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Everlasting life in the book of life. Your name written in blood. The blood of Jesus Christ. There's no religion. There's no works outside Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ alone. For only Jesus saved.